number. Really, I, I don't know the difference. Um, nothing has changed as far as I'm concerned. Um, I still sleep this way, the way I normally sleep, with the way I do. I still do my morning exercise. Nothing has changed about my weight, um, my feeding habit, all of that. So I think 60 is just a number. I think what is most important is your frame of mind, your relationship with your God and your friends and your community. Otherwise, for me, it's like any other day. So far, so good. I'm waiting to see the signs. Maybe in my physiology, maybe in my strength, but nothing has changed. Where am I shocked? <clears throat> I thought, well, people knew me, and that uh, if they are asking, I would have said no. Because really, all I wanted to do on that day was uh, to be in my garden. I have a small garden in my home. To be in my garden, play with my pets. Yes, I, I have uh, two dogs. Those are funny things people are hearing. I have two dogs. The female just uh, gave back to nine little pups. Yes, nine of them. I I have uh, two big ponds for fish, which I rear for my own consumption in my house. And I thought uh, I would just spend the evening in my house, in my, the day in my house, in my garden, ask my wife to point and key from my pond, roast fish for me, and then give myself good drinks. If, if friends come home, we eat together and play together quietly. That's what I thought. And I had the privilege of a a father who plays the greatest premium on his kids, um, who, who gave all for the education of the children. And of course, his supporting mom, and the greatest influence was on my dad, <clears throat> whose only emphasis for everything we've been is face your studies. And, uh, so I had a very good, good no, as a modest, but very rich in, uh, in training about uh, morality, about good values, about uh, what is right and wrong. And I went to, my primary school was a Roman, I'm Roman Catholic. My primary school was Roman Catholic. And I had the privilege of uh, doing baptismal class and all of that under the White Fathers. In my own time, we, still, we also have what they call modern school. I don't know whether you people know what they call modern school. That was an interlude between uh, secondary and, uh, and primary school. <clears throat> so I went to a Roman Catholic primary school. I went to a Roman Catholic modern school. And then I went to a Roman Catholic secondary school. And of course, uh, I'm, and I'm a Catholic by orientation. So that was it. And of course, when I finished, I then went to do HSC. One year though, in a place called uh, Baptist High School, then I met, I met my, and that was it. From there, I went to the University in Nusuka, University of Nigeria in Nusuka, where I did uh, mass communication, came out, I had a very good experience, like you now, at NTA Bini, under Dr. Tony Radia, as he used to call me that, yeah. And I said it everywhere. I met Dr. Tony Radia as a youth call member. Even when I'm 60 now, he's still my mentor. He follows me about cracking my career. Thereafter, I came to Lagos, after youth call work in a place called New Breed Magazine. 
of 1985, when I left Newbridge, I went to work in a publication called New Globe magazine, owned by Ikemba Chukwemeka Uyuku. Then I joined the Vanguard newspaper. And that's my story. I've been Vanguard ever since. From a club uh, production staff, sub editor, became chief sub editor, became uh, chief sub editor, then became the first editor of the evening paper, Lagos Mirror, which unfortunately didn't survive. Then moved on to become editorial training manager, deputy editor, editor now general manager and editor in chief. That's a short is my story. Nice. If I come again, I want to be a journalist. It has given me fame. I found favor with journalism. Um, and contrary to what many people think, it has not given me poverty. You see, riches are not just cash. Your real network is about the people who are with you that you know. In that, I think I'm richly blessed. So, to your question, it's my professional life. It's very fulfilling, um, if not arresting, to the extent that I turned down very many juicy offers as of journalism. I don't talk about it often. I had political offers. I had offer even to work in the oil industry. But journalism is something else. It's not about cash. It's not about cash. It's, uh, you need money, no doubt, but it's not about cash. There's a lot more of the influence in society. The things you can turn around. The things you can affect with a telephone call, with a story that you have crusaded with. So, much, so many changes you can make in our society. Those, to me, are truly rewarding. I have no regrets in being a journalist. And uh, not to now talk of being asked to come here and oversee LIG. It gives me great joy. I won't be mentioning names because it may be unfair to them. Some of the person whose toes I stepped on are dead. So they are not in a position to reply. Therefore, you don't discuss such people. But what has helped me really have been where I worked and the kind of publisher that I have. And of course, kind of values that I acquired, that I learned studying journalism and working in journalism. Once you deal with the matter of ethics, you are safe. It's very tempting to do extortion and blackmail be a successful journalist, but you're also digging your grave. If you go about extorting people, collecting bribes, it's a matter of time, the whole world will know, because whoever gives you a bribe will speak. It may not be immediate. The world will get to know. It will tell somebody, will tell somebody, will tell somebody. Nobody in this whole Nigeria can say, Ben Gadi Fai asked me for bribe, ever. I've been in this business officially since 1984. Nobody. I'm not wretched. I'm not. May not be that materially wealthy, but I'm not wretched. Contentment is key. Uh, again, you know, I keep going back to my publisher. He's a very modest person. His name is Sam Amuka. Everybody calls him Uncle Sam. Very, very modest. He lives in Antony village. Uncle Sam, well, if he are wanted with his position, with his success in his business, he should be able to live in any in Ikoi. He lives in his modest Antonio Village. In case your profile life 
walks the spirit, takes all of us to eat in the book. That's what he does up to now. And then everybody talks about the great Uncle Sam. So it's also about the choice of the kind of lifestyle you, you adopt, what you want to be. That's it. So long as you don't find me stranded at the bus stop, I'm okay. So long as um, my family is not thrown onto the street because we cannot pay the rent, I am happy. I live in the journalist estate, Arepo. It's on the outskirts of Lagos. But I'm a very, very, con I'm very, very happy, satisfied living in that place. Successfully, and once I get behind my gate, that's my fortress. And that's what I also try to impress on my children. Hard work, fear of God, respect for fellow human beings. That's it. People will always move, especially when they are young. However, you must get to a point where you choose to stay to build a career. Uh, because the publications, the media houses are very limited in number. Before you know it, you can exhaust the number and then you really have nowhere to go anymore. So you must choose what you want to be, choose a career path, if it's along the production line, if it's reportorial, if it's writing, if it's marketing, and then choose a place to work to, and then develop a career. I must say that one of the things that helped me also, that I was there on the spot when the opportunities came. Not that, like I told you, in 1988, I had four offers. Four. Four. I had in Chantry, I had in Daily Times, I had in two other places. Highly rated. But those, those offers we are matched by Vanguard. So I, say, I say this to journalists that work with me. You speak to my editors, my colleagues in Vanguard. They tell you that I had one poor thing, I tell them all the time. It's important that you keep investing in your career. You don't just sit on your butt complaining that the place is not doing well. No place that pays salary does excellent work. But it will pay you from the limit of what they earn. And from that little you earn, you must keep investing in your career. More importantly, and not most importantly, you must be reading. You must be reading. Because, you see, as you will soon find out, your classmates are in the banks. They are in the industry. They are in politics. Okay? And so, you are going to be measuring yourselves, your achievements. You're going to be doing peer review. Now, if you don't develop yourself, if you don't invest in your career, if you don't get up there, you may at some point develop inferiority complex. Um, if I, when I mention names of my schoolmates, people say, ha, ha, ha. But even those schoolmates know that I feel as good as they are. For all the successes they've had in life, some of them have been governors. Peter Obi was my classmate. Some of them have been central bank governors. In actual fact, two of them, as we speak, the current CBN governor left, left, we left in Sukkot same year. Same as Charles Oludo, my friend. Tunde Lemon was also in my set. So, now, if you don't develop yourself also, you develop complex to them. I believe I was teaching in the university I would have been a professor years ago. So as a newspaper person, I see myself as a professor in that city. 
I don't consider myself inferior to the man who has been a political office holder. Because if I go into politics, I probably will be a former governor myself. Or if I go into industry, captain of industry. So a journalist must develop himself mentally, intellectually, not to become inferior to the people he took off from. And because of what had happened to me in my career, I picked my phone and called any of those my schoolmates, classmates, for all their money, for all their posts, for all their influence. And they said that's been good. Because they also think that I'm probably as successful in my chosen field. So you need to invest in your career. You need to build confidence. You need to be stable on what you do and stay focused. And not be distracted by the little allure of the little pets of money. If you are chasing money, don't come here. But if you are chasing fame, if you want to develop your personality, which is what more than millions of Naira casting does, get a good platform, do your best professionally. Run away from extortion. It's very tempting to do blackmail. It's very, very tempting because this is a, a little rough society where people bend others a lot. So there's always something or somebody. And as a journalist, you have a judgment to make. Some will use those things they know for the greater good of the greater majority. Some want to convert it to personal aggrandizement. That's where they get into extortion. So yeah, that will get the story on you. If you don't pay, we'll do something on you. You can do something on them and then they kill you off. So it's up to you. So my advice, it's a good place to be. It's a good profession to build. There are too many charlatans in it, but you can shine if you stay focused. And every day we produce brilliant people. That's one young lady, you are a lady. I told you, I can the girl, Ogun Suji, I said, what about her name now? She was the first female editor in Punch. She's now the head of BBC in West Africa. Is it West Africa or Nigeria? Who says all of you cannot be that and better ones? It needs commitment. It needs moderation. It needs some modesty. Thank you.